You won't believe the one weird trick he used to get this girl. Yep, she's way out of his league. Meet Kirk. He is a classic Omega male practicing his begging skills. He wants to return to his ex Marnie. It's been two years of experimenting. She did a lot of experimenting with different people, races, and even species. I'm talking about uh, science experiments. While the guy patiently waited behind the corner. As Nietzsche said, that which is falling deserves to be pushed. At least he has a support group of his best amigos. Some losers, of course. But Stainer over here has got some balls to stop his friend from a tragic mistake. Another buddy, Jack, suggests Kirk should act like he's been fishing and snatching nonstop for those two years, while Devin recommends being himself. Like that ever worked. Alright, these are all bad suggestions. Do you know why lightning is cool? It never hits the same place twice. Be like lightning, Kirk. Hit once, leave, then say it's not your baby. Anyways, Kirk comes to Marnie with a sussy story, but it fails miserably to impress her. Girls can smell losers, I'm telling you. That's why I wear deodorant. Anyway, Marnie is now with Ron, standing right there in the scene, eating chips, calm as a lion, or just as stupid. You know the whole house is a mess. Kirk's parents adopted Marnie after the breakup, literally. Plus, Kirk has a bully brother, Dylan, who keeps throwing him in even more humiliation pinholes, like there's any second rock bottom there. Anyways, Kirk goes to his job at the airport security and meets a beautiful chick that everyone is interested in due to her temperature. Kirk manages to have a small talk with her, and she leaves. Like like all the cheeks in his life. Anyways, Molly is on the plane with her boiling hot snitchy friend Patty. Molly forgot her phone at the security check, so Patty calls it, and guess what? Kirk picks it up. Molly asks him to hold her phone until tomorrow when she's back in the city. Molly is an event planner, and she offers to meet them at the party at the Warhol Museum. Oh wow, that escalated quickly. Too bad these situations happen only in minute movies, never in real life. Kirk rolls over to a party with his buddy Devin, who is extremely positive something will happen tonight. Not in my world it would, but who knows? Kirk should get lucky someday. Anyways, Molly's sister Katie greets our lonely gentleman, and they finally bring Molly her phone back. On their way to leave, Molly asks them to stay and get a few drinks. Whoa, free angry juice? Well, this party seems promising, even though it's in a boring museum. Meanwhile, Devin gets flirted with by one of the girls, but unfortunately, he's happily married to a woman named Karen. Yeah, with that name, I question the happiness level in your marriage, but whatever. Oh no, we got an accident on board. Katie pushes Kirk, who spills the drink on a random dude. The dude is furious and asks for Kirk's invitation to the party. Kirk parries with the same question. Nice one. Unfortunately, the random dude was a museum director. Oh well, hope you got a few drinks before getting kicked out. Boiling hot Molly runs out, apologizing to her boys and inviting them tomorrow for a hockey game. Meanwhile, Kirk reasonably lowers his expectations about Molly at work, stating he has no chance with her. Relatable. This time, Kirk decides to take Stanner to the hockey game. Stanner meets the girls and realizes Molly is trying to push Kirk into her snitchy friend who loves giving offensive remarks about everything around her. You know these type of girls. Post-ironical about everything. The sarcastic type. The type that always had me bricked up in high school. Never mind. Anyways, our lovebirds are enjoying the hockey game hard. Turns out Molly knows hockey pretty deep, as deeply as she knows one of the hockey players. Coincidence? Molly leaves for drinks and Stanner goes with her, leaving Patty and Kirk alone. Patty goes straight to the point. Sorry, but I'm not interested. Understandable. If I only got a dollar for every time I heard that, I would have $458, which isn't that much if you consider the amount of pain I've suffered. Oh no, you don't get it. Patty is not interested in Steiner. Kirk slowly realizes it's a double date, and Patty clarifies that Molly is into Kirk. What? She's into him? That's why being a hot chick is cool. You can date alphas, betas, and omegas. Whatever you want. The boys hang out in a bowling club, and no one can believe Kirk is so unbelievably lucky. They give him a rating of about a 5, while Molly is a straight 10, and you can never jump more than two points up. This defies all logic. The inner machinations of Molly's mind are truly an enigma. We get a glimpse of Molly talking with Patty, and learn that Molly probably chose Kirk because he's a safe option. Those muscly alpha boys were tons of fun, but only left a broken heart. Kirk shouldn't even be worried about her past. Who even cares when you go on a date with a 10? But all Kirk does is think about the upcoming date. He's extremely nervous. Yeah, you should be. Not only is Molly super smoking, but she's also smart, knows French, and is a lawyer. And you're just an airport security guy dressed as all the waiters in this restaurant. Kirk sees a woman losing her scarf, so he goes to return it. Pure gentleman, but what a rookie mistake. Leave a seat near your chick empty, and it'll immediately get seated by some douche who thinks you're a waiter too. Anyway, it's Cam, Molly's ex. Kirk can barely cope with what's happening. Come on, soldier. Keep your head up. At least you're on a date. Seems like everything is going okay. Both share their stories. Molly gave up on her law company to do what she loves to do, and Kirk wants to be a pilot. Does this career ladder really work like this? Don't you need a pilot's license? Or is it like Sims where you start as a paperboy and become president? Anyways, Molly really enjoys the night. What a freaking surprise. I mean, what could you not love in Kirk? He's got ironic Reddit humor, he's clumsy, cringy, and works in a low-paid job. Basically what every girl wants. Hold on a second. He's exactly like me. Where's my hot chick? Kirk drops off Molly at her luxurious residence. The seatbelt in his car is screwed up, so he bends to unscrew it, and they kiss. Hey, Kirk, you gotta stop stealing my moves, man. So, the first contact. 
I guess it's time to meet the parents. Of course, I'm only joking, but Kirk isn't. Anyways, Kirk's parents can't believe he scored a 10. Kirk shows Molly to the rest of his family. Dylan, his fiance Debbie, Marnie, and Ron. Yep, flex on them all. Rub Molly in their faces and make them insecure crybabies. Okay, now things are getting pretty cringy and stuff. Just like a regular old family dinner. Ha, <laughs> luckily I don't have any family. Molly flexes with her job, earning 50k per wedding organization. 15k. That's how much Minecraft YouTubers make every day. The whole Kirk family loves Molly. All except Marnie, of course. But I don't understand what she's even doing there. They set up a next family trip at Branson and invite Molly. We're on it. Kirk feels so secure of himself with Molly as his date. He even beats his elder brother in some basement hockey game. Alright, that was fun hanging out with the Flintstones. Molly was so impressed she actually invited Kirk to her place. It's just Kirk, Molly, and a huge dog the size of an elephant. This should be interesting. Moving on, Molly's parents roll in for a surprise visit. Quick, throw your pants on the dog. What is this man even doing? Unfortunately, the dog goes straight for Kirk's family jewels, saving the night. But he doesn't appreciate it and retreats for some reason. Back to the world of humiliation. Whatever, it's not your fault her parents came, but it's definitely fault that you did. At work, the boys bully Kirk about his misfortune. Classic boys being boys. Marnie rolls over and offers Kirk to get back together. Classic girls being girls. Devin told her about Kirk breaking up with Molly. Did they indeed? Well, Kirk called Molly 17 times and she didn't pick up. Oh well, that was fun. You had your 15 minutes of fame, Kirk. Now Molly's going back for alpha boys again. Stanner says that's how nature rolls. He had his perfect 10 too, but she dumped him after just two months of dating. Then Jack rolls in, finally realizing he's a paid actor too, and he has to do something so he agrees with Stanner. Well, at least Devin believes in Kirk and says they'll be together with Molly if she's the one. So the boys roll over to an air show that Molly organizes. The perfect setup for another begging shot. Jack suggests Kirk go to Molly and be honest about the pants explosion situation. Molly thought Kirk didn't want to hang out with her parents, and she didn't even realize that Kirk had an explosion. Kirk breaks the hard humiliating truth. He had a premature incident and tried to blame the dog. And telling the truth actually works. I mean, Molly is dating a nerd already, meaning she's kind of crazy. Maybe she's into this sort of thing. Later, Cam comes by asking Kirk to help him get Molly back. Yeah, Cam thinks Kirk is Molly's gay friend. Totally understand why. Kirk plays along because that's what he always does. Anyways, Molly and Kirk enjoy the time of their lives. However, it's been 10 dates already, and they haven't, uh, held hands. This will not help Kirk's premature problems. Friends do what they're used to doing, and pressure Kirk into breaking to the next stage. But to get to the next level, Kirk must be clean everywhere. And you can be clean too with today's sponsor, Manscaped. I'm just kidding. No sponsor today. Luckily, Devin is there to give a hand. If you don't do this for the homies, then you're not really homies. It's Katie's birthday party and time for Kirk to meet Molly's parents. Again. Hold it, my man. Don't get too overexcited. We know what happens when you do. Molly goes with a half-truth saying Kirk is in aviation. It turns out Molly's dad is a pilot. Talking about pilots, here's a fellow one. Cam. Invited by Molly's parents to the party. Yeah, Kirk goes all in with the angry juice. It's gonna be a long night. Oh wait, here's Cam retreating from the battlefield after realizing Kirk is not gay. That was fast. Before leaving, he spills out how Molly is not really that perfect because she has some birth defect. Hmm, birth defect? Maybe she's packing some heat downstairs. I knew it. Some would mistakenly call that a defect. Some believe it's God's miracle. Anyways, Kirk is left puzzled. Don't worry, you'll see it soon. Turns out, it's her feet. She's got webbed toes. Some people are into that. I for one didn't even know it existed. I love it. It's not as good as the alternative we discussed earlier, but whatever. Kirk is definitely not happy about it. He was once in Thailand and really enjoyed the experience. I guess Kirk isn't into her anymore, so he leaves. Jokes aside, it was some more self-esteem BS, because Kirk finds Molly too perfect for him. Poor Molly. She thought Kirk was a safe pick, but this guy's always leaving. Time passes by and we see the whole Kirk family boarding the Branson flight. Kirk is back with Marnie. Bruh. Hey, Ron is with them too. Bruh. Again. His friends couldn't believe he fell so low, but then again, they did consider Molly too good for him. So what did they want? Stainer realizes now is the perfect time to learn why it didn't work out with his perfect 10, Tina. So he runs straight to her. Tina breaks the hard truth. He was good enough for her, but he wasn't good enough for himself. Self-esteem issues. Stainer gets a eureka moment and runs to Kirk to save his miserable life. He sends the message and Kirk hears it, but it doesn't stop him from staying miserable. So Stainer calls Patty and asks for her help too. Meanwhile, realization slowly kicks in for Kirk and he sends to hell all of his family except his mom because that's what men do. He wants to get out of the plane, but it's a $25 fine if he opens the door right now. Unfortunately, he's a brokey, so he calmly sits back in his seat because that's what reasonable men do. At the same time, Patty picks up Molly and they drive to the airport, where Stainer meets them. He gets Molly a ticket and tries to board her on the plane, but the plane is already leaving. Luckily, they have Jack on the runway, and he can stop the plane. Oh, so that's why they needed this guy in the movie. The plane gets a mechanical problem and turns back, and everyone gets off the plane. Kirk courageously follows his dream, and although Melanie tries to stop him, there's not much she can do right now. Kirk and Molly meet, apologize, agree with her being a 10 and him being a 5, and live happily ever after. Later, Kirk gets his pilot's license, and together with Molly, they fly to Cleveland. Moral of the story? Just be yourself.